How do you work on your Harley Davidson engine? Or any motorcycle engine? Let's get into it. Revelator Alpha. Hello, welcome to Revelator Alpha. I hope you're all well. So this video is about working on your motorcycle engine, whether it's a Harley Davidson, whether it's a Suzuki, Kawasaki, Honda, whether it's a, a little motocrosser, whatever it is. Here's the question. When you're working on your motorcycle engine, whatever it is, do you leave the engine in the frame or do you take it out? Now, I want to give a bit of context to this. Hold on. So I was watching a video the other day where uh, I just stumbled across it, strangely enough. And there was a guy who was working on a Harley and he was changing the uh, cylinders and the pistons, right? And uh, he, basically, he'd left the engine in situ. Standard stuff for me. Okay, this is exactly what you should do. You just leave the engine in there. There was another guy commenting on it and he was basically slating him, criticizing him heavily. And he also mentioned, said, well, why don't you just take the engine out and work on it on a bench? And I thought, well, do you even know about Harley Davidsons? Have you ever worked on them? Uh, do you know what standard practices are for this bike? Now, th there are kind of exceptions here because let's say if you're talking about small motorcycle engines, 125, 50ccs, that kind of thing, but actually they're, they're physically small and they don't weigh a lot. So for a person just to take them out of the frame, work on it on a bench, uh, especially if you're doing a full engine strip down, actually sometimes it's just a lot easier just to take the whole engine out, pop it on a bench and work on it. So, so I get that. But we're talking about Harley Davidson engines here. They're big old lumps. Uh, any engine, motorcycle engine, you know, of, of any size, of any power is going to be a, a big old lump. So standard practice is to start taking things off whilst the engine is in the frame. Service manuals will tell you this if you need to do the clutch. Whatever motorcycle engine it is, they usually say, well, you can do this with a motorcycle engine still in the frame. Taking off the uh, magneto, the flywheel, yeah, in the, in the frame. Taking off the cylinder head, yeah, in the frame. Taking off uh, the overhead cams or, or the valves or whatever it is, yeah, in the frame. The frame acts as a third or fourth pair of hands. Uh, it's actually bolted in there, so you can put all your weight and all your might into undoing the bolts, and everything is still sturdy. Everything is still aligned. So it kind of makes sense to leave the engine in the bike, right? Now, if you ever worked on Harley Davidson engines, uh, in particular, let's say, then uh, there isn't a lot of clearance right at the top to uh, get the uh, get the uh, cylinder heads off. But actually, there is. It's just about but they are designed to be worked on in the frame as well. So if we consider more modern engines, actually the way they're incorporated into the frame, they are a stress member as well. So the frame or the top of the frame is bolted directly to the engine. So what you can do, you can actually unbolt the frame or the engine from the frame and just take the whole engine from the underside of the frame. And that makes it a lot easier. Some older bikes from the 70s, let's say CB750s, Hondas, uh, I believe a 750, certainly a 900, they had a removable uh, sub frame or sub cradle uh, bar. So basically, you just unbolted it uh, one end and on the other end, you remove that, and then you can unbolt the engine and remove it out from the sideways, but also diagonally down, as it were. It made the whole process a lot easier. But if you haven't got that, the easiest way is just to unbolt things from the engine and then you're taking out a much lower mass. But do you need to remove the whole engine unless you're getting deep into it, let's say into the crankshaft or something like that? It depends on the engine that you've got, whether it's a unit or a pre-unit, and whether the gearbox is actually contained within the engine housing uh, or whether it's a separate unit, obviously Harley Davidson's that kind of thing of, of yesteryear, but certainly now it's all one big unit. Well then yes, you would take the whole engine out after you've removed you know the cylinder heads that kind of thing just to reduce the weight then you do it all on a bench you do a full casing uh, separation let's say and then the gearbox and then you know then you could get onto uh, the crankshaft as well but most things most jobs can be performed actually on the bike even a gearbox on the uh, harley davidson's they are designed for you to be able to do it in the frame 
do it in the frame and it's a lot easier just to put everything back in so i kind of question where this person was at when they were being hypercritical of somebody who was leaving the engine in the frame and just working on it in a normal way when service manuals certainly from harley davidson that i know they'll say you can leave this in the frame other motorcycles that I know uh, that I've worked on and I've got the workshop manuals for them they're actually say it actually says yes this can be undertaken with the engine still in the chassis or still in the frame it kind of makes sense why would you remove an engine for a, a basic job that is not going deep into the crankshaft that you're not having to split cases certainly for a cylinder head certainly for a, a piston change why why would you do that now of course there might be the impression that uh there isn't a lot of a room at the top of the engine space let's say beneath the uh beneath the frame and i get that but it's still designed to be removed whilst the engine is still in situ so let me know your thoughts let me know you know what your preference would be would it be to remove the whole engine it doesn't have to be a harley davidson could be a suzuki could be a, a honda whatever it is a ducati whatever it is if you're doing top end work would you take the engine out of the frame i certainly wouldn't unless unless i was having to do something else of course unless the whole point was that i had to split the whole casings apart and then yes everything does have to come out and it really depends how easy it is to get that engine out and also how many people are going to be helping me in getting that engine out in terms of manual lifting if it's just me then i want to lighten the load as much as possible if i'm going to be splitting everything off that engine anyway then whether i take those components off before the engine is out of the frame or afterwards is academic but what i do know is having the engine in the frame is going to assist me as a lone mechanic as it were uh, to uh, work on it more efficiently because as i said before the frame is acting as a third or fourth pair of hands it's actually holding the engine whilst i take bits off now as i say there are exceptions to this uh, certainly with lighter engines yeah you may want to take the whole thing out but the same rule still applies if you're only doing top end work you know cylinder pistons there's no need to remove the engine surely or is it just me if you're doing clutch changes uh you know that kind of thing uh you know flywheels that kind of thing peripheral stuff you don't need to take the whole engine out now if you're talking about gearboxes it really depends what engine you're talking about uh is the gearbox accessible from the engine uh being mounted in the frame some aren't because you have to split uh, apart the whole casings the whole engine casings uh, to be able to access the uh the gearbox let's say with japanese bikes for example you have to take everything apart uh, just to access the gearbox which is buried deeper within the gunnels of it so you know there, there are exceptions to every rule i suppose but for the most part for most jobs the engine stays in the frame surely or am i wrong am i wrong i don't know anyway i just thought that was a bit odd really you know somebody commenting on the way somebody else was doing a you know a cylinder head change and a, and a basically a piston change you know upgrading uh, their engine uh, top end and they were criticizing the way they were doing it and i thought that's that's just a bit odd why would you do that you know most engines that i've ever known that are big engines and you're working on them by yourself you're definitely going to be taking bits off before you ever have to remove it from the from the frame unless it is a stress member unless it is part of the frame which you can easily unbolt and take it from the underside or say you can take it from the uh from the side without with removing part of the frame as well those kinds of times yeah unless it's a very light engine yeah i get it take the whole thing out if you really want to but let us know your thoughts on this as i'm certainly no expert on which is the right way or the wrong way to do it but for me it just seems logical just to leave it in the frame i, I don't know why you would take it out of the frame unless you're doing a, a full casing split then of course yeah then eventually you're gonna have to take it out but everything else just leave it in the frame yeah and this applies to all engines really of all manufacturers you know certainly the big engines you know let's say i don't know kawasaki i don't know zr 1400 or hayabusa whatever any litre sports bike whatever it is you know unless you have to really take that engine out to leave it in there let us know your thoughts don't forget to subscribe hit that bell like and share check out the website revelatoralf.com and i'll catch you again Ta -da.